Hi, this is Marcia, and I've been asked by Kelly and Christina to give you my why for blended learning. Hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm super excited to have you guys listening in to learn about the elements of blended learning, why it's so important. I get this question all the time. Marcia, is it just one more thing? Why blended learning? My classroom is doing just great. Why do I need to change anything? My scores are amazing. All of that is true. We're not changing anything. We're enhancing you as an educator. Take the words blended learning out of the equation and I want you just to focus in on good teaching strategies. When you stop and think about what makes a good teacher, think about like, hmm, what are those elements that I really need to really be that best teacher I could possibly be? And probably it's going to be the same thing that we talk about all the time, where you're building those academic relationships with the students, where you have the ability to use data to drive your instruction, where you're differentiating the content, where you are meeting with the students on a weekly or daily basis in a small group instruction where the students are highly engaged, where the students are taking ownership of their learning, where every student is successful. Those are just some of the qualities that we enhance in blended learning environments. When I was working with a team of high school teachers just last week, I asked this social studies teacher, I said, why do you think blended learning is important? He goes, you know what? I always want to differentiate. I always want to meet with students in a small group, but I just don't have time. By setting up small group instruction, I am now able to do all of those elements while the students are working in different learning studios. That's the key. Differentiated instruction, filling in the holes and gaps, bringing those students to that next level of learning. That's what it's all about. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you just a quick little view about what small group looks like. And this is the backbone of blended learning studios. With small groups, I'm really going to start to enhance that content. So let's give it a roll. So this is a blog post that I just got done putting together after working with a team of teachers again last week because they were really struggling on how to get small groups in that 45 minute class period. If you're a block, then you have the granted ability with extra time. But that doesn't mean you can take longer amounts of small group. It means that maybe one part of the block is whole group instruction and the second part of the block would be where you're doing your studios. So this again is a blog post with videos if you want to go back and watch it another time. I'm just going to go quickly through this so you can see the power of small group. In a small group environment, I get to meet with every single student during the learning studio days. But I want you to realize that you don't have to do blended learning studios every day. You can do it once a week, twice a week, but consistency is the key. You really want to be consistent. And sometimes when we're trying something new, the way of delivering content, we might want to start out small. That's why you see I have two studios, then I build up to three studios. That means I'm meeting with two small groups and then I'm meeting with three small groups. And eventually I will build up to four small groups. If you looked at those two calendars, those are one, two, three, four weeks on that calendar. And here are the next four weeks. So that means in eight weeks, I'm building up the skills for the students to be working in learning studios. Also, when I'm doing small group instruction, I will eventually get to the point where I'm going to be using the data to drive my small groups. That means I'm going to be pulling homogeneous grouping to my small group area while the other students are working in studios. When the students are working with me, they can go work with whoever they want. They do not have to stay in that grouping. And that's really key. So, why blended learning? I get to meet with all the students and differentiate their content and learning styles. Time amounts. When I'm working as small group instruction in the first part, I'm going to be rotating my students just so they're learning how to rotate to the different learning studios. But eventually, I'm going to be doing different time amounts for my students. My high flyers, I'm going to get them in, get them out. They're going to be spending about five minutes with me where my other groups might be spending a little bit more time. While I'm working with my first group, my high flyers, I'm making sure they understand the concept. 
not only for their success, but to help me out. When they're done with my small group, they're going to now become studio experts and they're going to be able to help the other students and the studios. Trust me, this is a gem for that student organization and ownership piece. It's going to really help cut down on the number of questions you get asked. While I'm meeting with the first group, my second group, my strugglers, are going to watch a quick little video that I created talking about that concept that they're going to learn in my small group. I know what you're just thinking right now. Another video, I had to make one more thing. Those videos are so powerful when it comes from you. Yes, it takes time, but you build up that library. And we're not talking about 20 minutes here. We're talking about a short, quick video that you can use to help reteach that concept to the students. And then it's there for all students to use, not just your strugglers. Give it a roll, it's worth it. Then my next groups, my third and fourth group, I'm gonna meet for about 10 minutes a piece. And we're gonna really just get to that level, take them to that next level of learning. We're gonna enhance what they've been working on in the other studios. It's gonna work, I promise. Different time amounts. And speaking of time amounts, I need to set a timer at my small group. That way I don't go over that time. So give that something. Here's something I didn't get to talk about much just now. The learning studios. There are four learning studios. Small group is what I'm talking about right now. Then we have independent practice. That's where they're doing questions. That's where they might be doing independent reading. Digital content. That's like where the students are going online to practice that content like Newzella. They might be going to a Pear Deck or a Nearpod. Something that's going to give them that concept. And then the other studio is a hands-on learning studio. And that's where the students get to apply their learning through creating, collaborating, communicating, and using critical thinking skills. So studio days incorporate that one learning objective in four different ways. Okay, back into it. Prerequisites. When I'm working with students in my small group, I might have them complete something before they come to me to gain time. When the students are working on something and they come to me with like a brainstorming activity or they've taken time to answer some questions, I can go in more depth to help them to answer and understand that concept. And it helps me to really use that data to drive my instruction. The photo you see on the screen, the little girl is going through, answering a set of questions, and then as I pull the students back, I can really quickly see, did they understand the concept that we're going over? I already have my groups made for the day. I'm not changing groups on the fly. I'm just going to look at that data real quick to see how many questions they missed. Google Forms is amazing. You could quickly go in and see what questions were missed the most for that group of students. Also, prerequisites gives me that little bit of time to walk around the room just to check in to see how the students are doing. And again, I explain more of that in my blog post. Check-ins. As you get going with our small groups, we're going to really decrease behavior and off-task behaviors by checking in with the students when they come to the small groups. What did you complete? What do you need to do next? What do you need to go after you're done with me? How are you feeling today? Hey, how was that track me? All of those things when I'm doing a check-in, it's just going to build up that trust that they're going to gain from me and that small group instruction. Check-ins take about 30 to 60 seconds. It's not a long amount of time. It's just giving that quick little, hey, how are you doing? What can we do next? Small group instruction is so powerful. All those things combined from meeting with every student, making sure we differentiate, checking in on the students, having them complete different activities before they come to me, and all that is combined in building academic relationships. When we deploy small group instruction, we really start to build the trust with the students, the students complete more work, they ask quality questions, and you'll have less behaviors. I'm telling you, take the words blended learning out of anything you've heard and replace it with just good instruction. Why is what I do different? Well, because I give a step-by-step -step sequence to get to what you just saw in all those videos. I give your team an idea of what to do first, second, and third, focus goals, and then we make this big idea of good teaching or blended learning into tangible, meaningful ways of deploying the content. I know you're going to love this. I know that you're going to enjoy learning more about blended learning studios. And here's the thing, you have amazing experts in your building that will be able to help you along the way.
Huge shout out to Kelly and Christina and Molly for allowing me to come in and give you this quick little video. I hope you guys enjoyed it.